Hi beautiful people, a few days ago I asked you to ask me questions and now it's time for my answers and I'm gonna read your questions too. No Name said, I can never understand the difference between FI and FE functions. What are they and how do we know which one we use? Okay, so FI and FE work in opposite directions. FI is sensitive to his own feelings and must look outside for validation. FE is sensitive to the feelings of others and must look inward for validation. It will be easier for FI downs to quickly form an opinion based on their own core values without considering the group. FE downs will naturally look to others first rather than taking a stance between, uh, based on themselves and they are likely to leave open opinions other than the most important and subject to change depending on the specific context and scenario. And this is just a framework because it does not mean that someone who uses FI has to be selfish or that someone who uses FE has no identity of their own. There are many FE users who are very individualistic and someone, some are even selfish. And there are many FI users who care about the opinion of the environment, status, etc. Other functions also play a role in one type and it must be looked at holistically and more deeply. Yaya Lu asked, do you think cognitive functions are a nature or nurture thing? Is it in our genes or is it something you develop? My father, ISTJ, believes my mother, ESFP, has brainwashed me when really I'm just an INFP, so of course I, I will be more similar to her. Okay, I'm not sure how INFP is more similar to ESFP than ISTJ. But never mind, maybe you're right, it can be the case. Um, so I wrote about this topic in my book, so that's the reason why I didn't talk about it in detail on the channel. And I suggest you re to read my book, along the way you will find out why you talk about your father like this and how an INFP in general perceives here his or her mother. Basically, to answer your question at least a little bit, both factors influence the formation of a type, but I think that the early years are crucial. FI Madness asked, would you say it's more difficult for intuitives to feel loved? Hmm, I don't think it's harder for intuitives to feel loved. Every type can have some emotional problem, trauma, etc. It may be harder for some types like intuitive feelers to accept love, maybe. And they are not the only ones, there are other types as well, but that is closely related to some traumas and bad experiences, pathological tendencies in some types, and many other factors. Basically, the answer to the question would be no. Randomus Anonymous asked, I'm an INFJ, mom INFJ and dad ISTJ, any MBTI traits I could have got from my dad? Okay, my answer would be, if you grew up with them, they definitely influenced the formation of your MBTI type. As I already mentioned, I talked about this in my book and I talked about the origin and formation of one type. Also, genetics has a lot to do with things like temperament, character, etc. So in terms of MBTI type, you can be a product of both and therefore have his traits, so maybe even some so-called MBTI traits. FI Madness again asked um, where you can tell the main difference between an ISTP and an INTP. Well, my advice is to pay attention to the characteristics of the whole quadra to which one of the, these two types belongs. So, when typing, it can be confusing for you if the ISTP is 
for example, Enneagram 5, and the INTP is, for example, very physically dexterous. But if you consider the common traits of the ISTP, INJ, ESTP, and ENJ types and compare them to the INTP you are observing, the difference will become apparent to you, especially if you are intuitive. Elian asks, is a way to tell the difference between Enneagram 4 and 9? The easiest and fastest way is to test their basic fear. If the person's basic fear is that he has no identity or personal significance, then he's definitely a four. If the person's basic fear is loss or and separation, then he's nine. But if you notice both fears in a person, and if it's hard to tell if that confuses you, it is probably because he has both of these types in his tri-type. And then you have to observe him more and more and more, and that's it. Tarzan Beda has longer questions. He said, or she, as an ENFJ, do you sometimes feel like you could unlock the secrets of the universe, but about the moment you're about to do so, it's almost as if a collective spirit possesses everyone you know to bombard you with their ideas or a core or drama all at once. And then every now and then a different kind of spirit comes through in a very special way for you through someone you might not have expected. I'm an INFJ, I suspect my dad is an ENFJ, that's why I'm asking. And I kind of relate to that idea, but I think a bit more logically than he does usually, which was genially, genially, oh my god, that this word is very hard for me. Um, so, shocking for me to find out because I suspect I've met a couple of INTPs and INTJs and I still consider my dad way smarter than them in many ways. Not always, but in most ways. Everything comes to both of us naturally, but his sensory issues aren't quite as intense as mine. He's definitely a little bit riskier than me. Okay, I'm done. I really like the description of the relationship between you and your father. I have the impression that you understand each other well and that's very nice. That's always nice to see and read. Maybe I experienced what you mentioned and I mean if I understood you correctly and I hope I did. I think I did. But I just want to say one thing. Do not confuse thinking functions with smartness or intelligence because Sometimes it doesn't have to be completely connected, and after all, there are different types of intelligence. Mattia T. asked, How did you get interested in 16 types, and how did you learn typing people? Can you suggest some readings which inspired you in your process? P.S. My Sicilian blood loves the picture, it seems. Uh, Tarmina's theater. Okay, greetings to Sicily, I'm going to Italy for the new year and I'm really looking forward to it, I'm very excited. Since I was a child, I felt very attracted to psychology and even long ago before knowing about typology and all of this, I felt that there are several types of people and patterns of behavior, I noticed that by myself. And when I discovered Jung's theory, everything I felt took on a new meaning, on another level. Um, I thought how to type people by observing and comparing them to each other, and I still think it's the best way. You have to dig and observe every detail, and always have forms of behavior in draw, and take them out when needed. It's the best way. Violet asked, the video of yours that was, I'm sorry, the video of yours that has intrigued me the most is the INFJ female fatal video from a long time ago. Can you talk more about that? I'm curious to know where you learned this because I haven't been able to find any information on this anywhere else. For some reason, this topic left a mark on me. That video was from a long time ago, really? 
oh my god the time is passing so slowly for me i don't know what is happening and great question mm. and i'm so glad that you wrote this and i'm glad that it left a mark on you that's the point of everything i do and thank you i have to admit that INFJ is one of the types i like to analyze the most in private especially lately and i have had a lot of experience with various people who are that type and the greatest spectrum of my knowledge about them is actually from my experience but when i connect that with some knowledge i have i get a whole picture so i really think that i understand that type very well uh, comments like this inspire me to speak even more and deeply on this subject so thank you once again Shane asks, how do you relate to being an Enneagram 4 ENFJ since it's a more common type among introverts, for example, INFPs and INFJs? How do you feel you are different from Enneagram 4 INFPs or other ENFJs of other Enneagram types? Okay, great question. When I do introspection, this is exactly the topic I think about often. And sometimes I feel like I'm like I'm not adapted because my FA uh, isn't at the full potential it would be if I were some other type of ENFJ person and on the other hand I feel like I'm not so uncompromising enough like some INFP force and I really like that about INFP force um, maybe I understand the INFJ for the most because they may have some similar way of doing things but I don't know I'm not sure I often feel like I'm ambivert I feel very comfortable after quality communication with people definitely but I have no problem at all being completely alone in my creative faces that gives me energy I also like to help others but above all I care about my values and individuality the most, I have to admit. The Frenchie asked, Hi Sara, how can we improve our FI and our SE functions? Hi Frenchie, I don't know your type, maybe you're an INTJ, I don't know. I suppose you are an INTJ, I don't know why. Um, if one of those functions is your inferior function, you can work on it in your own way. And I have said that before in my videos, everyone should find their own way because we are so, so different in our work processes and everything else. So, for example, you can use your Enneagram type. That's how I do it. If you are a type 4, what is growth for, for you is type 1 and then you should work on rationalization. You need to rationalize your actions and act accordingly. You realize how bad SE is holding you back in life and you try to influence it more and more and more. That's how I do it with my TI and I think I improved my TI with this way of doing things. Pink Foxes asked, is it normal as an extrovert to only be interested in introverts? Is having that energy balance essential in a long-term relationship? Hi, I don't think it's necessarily essential, but if you feel that only the energy of an introvert suits you, don't hold yourself back, that's your preference, that's okay. There is no general rule there are some good combinations, of course, but there is no ideal match because there is no ideal type either. Seventeen Fan asked me, What do you think about INFP and ESTP, INFP and ISTP, INFP and ENTJ? And how to cheer up an ENFJ? Okay, INFP and STPs it can be okay combination because their functions are compatible. INFP and ENTJ can also have a very good dynamic, especially in communication. But it really depends on the person and other factors.
factors and it's very complex so you have to think about it deeply by yourself by observing those people i don't even know what you want from them so it's a difficult question and uh, how to cheer up an enfj okay that's maybe easier question for me <laughs> because I'm, I'm one so it's also individual but i can always be cheered up by the good energy of a person and actually Today I was cheered up by some memes that a friend sent me. I was laughing. And I can say that an ENFJ usually doesn't need much to be happy. Of course, if he or she is healthy. 